whilst it doesn't grow in size, it grows in population, is what you're saying. That, that would be my balance. guess, yeah. Well, we've actually got someone who would like to jump in on this question. Hello, Patrick. It's Professor Brian Cox here. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. Let's have a guess then. Why do you think Milan Rapike um, was injured and had to miss a full pre-season? Any guesses? Got, did he get hit in the face by a, a big giant bird? Uh, no, but oh. close because he did. It was something on his face that he did with something. He tried to shave, but he shaved his nose off. Caught no, his eye. I'm, no. Oh, have oh, you just hello. Wikipedia'd that, Paddy the Baddy? No. Uh, just my yeah. encyclopedic knowledge. Do you know Come what? Because I can see. I don't um... know what the rest of the story is. <laughs> Caught his eye or something. <laughs> He shaved his eye. I can see. No, 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 no. You said shaved his nose off. Pat said poked himself in the eye, didn't he? He poked himself in the eye. So he was waiting for a flight and poked himself in the eye with his boarding pass. Had to miss an entire (laughs) preseason. You'd be, you would be gutted. Now, finally, Pat, if if you don't get this one, then there's something wrong. Um, Right. How did Queen of the South keeper Sam Henderson hurt his shoulder in 2018? Wait, why would I know this? Oh, when when I give you the answer, you'll understand. Oh, boxing. No, no, far more unorthodox <laughs> than that. Uh, I'll give I knew you a clue. Go for that. It, it involves an animal. Oh, was he was he horse riding? No, no, but. A, playing with a his similar, dog. Similar oh, size it was a animal. cow. A cow. Yes. 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 What, he was hit by a cow. He was hit by a runaway <laughs> cow. He was riding a cow. <laughs> no, he was, hit by, <laughs> <laughs> he was hit by. He was hit by a cow. runaway cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh That'd be a far more gosh. interesting injury story for you, wouldn't it, Pat? <laughs> but for you and the boys who are out, who are injured at the minute, um, how frustrating is that? Because. You know, you live, you breathe, your whole world is football. Um, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, when I was out for that long period when I first joined Leeds, that was my first real kind of time on the sideline, which was a lengthy spell. So I learned a lot then of kind of how to deal with being injured and like setting goals and not run, not rushing the process, like knowing that, that you're going to get better, you're not it's going to take this time, just accept it. And so I think the fact that this is only like, it's a minor injury, really, it's nothing massive. Obviously, it's taken a few weeks, but it's not like a kind of long, long term one. So Mm. I've just used this time to try and build up strength, like do extra things that normally I wouldn't be able to do, because I've got to prepare for a game and I've got to make sure that my legs are okay, or that I'm not achy and stuff like that. So it's kind of a chance for me to really work on things that I wouldn't ordinarily get the chance to do. Hmm. What, like what kind of things? So I, I can, <laughs> so. <laughs> That's a great question. I was waiting for him to, to elaborate a little bit more, but so obviously on a week, time, Pat. On a he's not been on basis. every week, has he? He's not used to it. Yeah. <laughs> he's forgotten the process, yeah. <laughs> so normally if I had a game Saturday, I'd work, we'd do gym at the club and stuff, and then I'd work away from the club probably two times in that week with a guy at home. But now, and that was kind of building up so that I'm fresh for the game and like everything is geared towards being at as top level as you can be for the Saturday. But now I can kind of like beast my legs and push my body to like limits where I'm going to be sore the next day, but it doesn't matter really because it's not like I have to be able to perform right. on, in front of the, the, the fans or be able to perform for the team. So I can keep doing that day on, day out, day out really without having that pressure or the worry that I'm not going to be like feeling fresh. Can that maybe help you in the long, obviously right now it's annoying, but can that period of time where you're able to do that actually help you in your performance on the pitch in the long run? Yeah, that's the idea. So that kind of take advantage of a negative situation really that whilst I'm not being able to play, putting in like extra work and doing Mm. extra things now that are going to help me be quicker and stronger. So when I do come back, that I'm in a better place than before I was injured. Is there ever a situation where if a team um, really desperately needs X position striker in this case, 
that they might try and rush you back, like that Bielsa, I'm not saying Bielsa would do it, but that a manager may come and say, look, I know you're four weeks away, but I need you I need you in three, I need you in two. Like, is that, Does that ever happen or is it always, no, player welfare is is, is priority? I see Bex uh, get a little <laughs> cheeky yeah. smile on his You've face. Do you know what? Go on, Bex. You yeah, it, it does happen, but not in such a blatantly obvious way. Um, obviously, as a as a player, you want the best for your team. You want to win as many games as possible, and you want the team to do well. Um, and the you know you can tell when the manager's getting a, towards the desperate point because he comes to visit you and he, he says, right. "How's it going? How are you getting on? <laughs> oh, look at that! Legs are getting stronger. You know, ankles looking firm. Kicking footballs yet? Or you know, like there's there's little things that that do happen. But at the same time. You know in yourself, you don't want to over, you, you don't want to rush back because it's just going to be a matter of time before you end up back in the physio department. So right. it's going to be counterproductive. But you, when you play football, you've got that bug. You want to play every single minute of every single game as quickly as you, you possibly can get back. You want to. So it's, it's just about trying to find that, that happy medium, really. That's, that's what I found. Um, but I also found when I did rush back, and I'm not. I'm not saying this because I don't want Pat to to come back. I, I think we <laughs> sort of need him back soonish rather than later. But when I did rush back, I did feel like I was I was overcompensating, looking after that that one injury by overusing the other side of my body, and right. that did kind of hamper me a little bit later on because I started getting injuries on the other side. Right. So um, it's just about finding something that makes you happy something that you're comfortable with and and if you're if you're ready for it then you know ride it as a rule i would say most football players would rather be on the pitch than off the pitch Definitely. If, uh, given yeah. the choice um but you patrick and jermaine are quite different characters um like mentally i'm intrigued to know how you both deal with injury differently like patrick i know you said obviously you'd want to be fit and playing but you've said you know you understand it's a process you're gonna to have to go through it and jermaine you said i just wanted to be but i was i hated it i hated being injured and you just wanted to be back out there how do mm. you both cope mentally like with that situation of going right i cannot play right now Pat, oh, you know, I wondered what Jimmy was doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, After you. <laughs> to be fair, I, I probably am a little bit more like snappy around the house because you're like missing that competitive side of going mm. out and playing. So there's always that little bit of frustration. Um, but generally, try and I try and like replicate that in, I suppose, the only way I can at the minute, in the gym. So like boxing today, obviously with the physio trying to knock his arm off when he's holding the pads, like things, <laughs> just silly things, like trying to be competitive and get that like edge. So are you, scr are you screaming at people on Call of Duty? Are you like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Generally, my mates are on my team. Although if I do get a sh if I do get a shot, there are some in some nasty death comes recently. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically yeah. you have a shorter fuse than normal is what you're saying pat because yeah. there's that frustration there but yeah. were you like that when you got injured yeah definitely i was the same um but do you know what the thing that i missed the most about it the thing that i hated the most about being injured obviously being stuck inside and, and not being a part of it but just not being able to be around the boys while they're training and listen to the banter and, and take the mick out of people. So what I did when I was, I was, um, I was at Preston and I done my hand, I, I done my, my knee for the first time. So I, I took my whole, I took the whole gym basically outside and, and plast, uh, plotted all of the equipment by the side of the pitch. So I was still involved with training oh. without actually training with the team. Yeah, no, it didn't go down well. The gaffer was not happy. He was not happy. <laughs> Simon Grayson, not happy. <laughs> did, did you carry on regardless? <laughs> Absolutely. You know me. <laughs> Listening on together. Um, Matt has asked Patrick. Not me. And this, this Matty, does actually... Matty. Oh, not, not that one. Not Matt with the boo. And this is an actual, um, like, it needs an answer. Like, it's not opinion. Right, Matt yeah. asks, the universe has been proven to be infinite. It's also been proven to constantly be expanding. How can something that never ends get bigger? 
Oh my god. <laughs> How can something that never ends get bigger? Uh, that's the question. So because the basically because the universe is infinite but it's also constantly expanding. How is that? Because if it's never ending, how is how does something that never ends grow? <laughs> Growing within it, th- are things expanding within it, like planets, stars, and stuff expanding within it, or the actual whole universe? Because it could ex- things could expand within the universe, which is still it growing, but the actual universe is still never ending. Mm. What you mean, like new stars could pop up and stuff? Yeah, so there's things within the universe that could probably expand. But I think the, and I think grow. I think the question is because it's already infinite; it already goes on forever. How could how could it possibly get bigger than forever? Is the, is the question? I think more populated, I guess. That's my guess. <laughs> well, <okay>. Still <laughs> no, growing, actually, isn't that, it? <laughs> that makes sense. I understand that if it expands, yeah, it becomes. You get more planets, more stars and stuff. That kind But it can't get any it... bigger. It's already as big as it could possibly... It already goes on forever. It can't get any bigger. Yeah. That's the that's Yeah, the but point. I think Pat means in terms of space, but ad- adding things to it would still be expanding, and I hadn't thought about it like that. So, Pat, you're saying that um, whilst it doesn't grow in size, it grows in population, is what you're saying. That, that would be my guess, yeah. Well, we've actually got someone who would like to jump in on this question. Hello, Patrick. It's Professor Brian Cox here. <laughs> Now, that answer to Matt's fantastic question was, um, I don't know how to say it really, but um, not entirely right. Let's put it that way. Um, how did he know what so I was going to say? Is, well, first of all, we don't know whether the universe is infinite or not. We strongly suspect that it's far bigger than the piece we can see, which contains two trillion galaxies at the moment. Um, but even if it is infinite then it can still be stretching. Just think of an infinite rubber sheet and then stretch it. So the distance between any two points on the sheet will increase. Um, The sheet doesn't have to stretch into anything. It can just be that all the distances across that infinite sheet are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's possibly the way the universe is. Um, But as I emphasize, we don't even know whether it's infinite or finite. Um, So, you know, so, so a good answer, I suppose, is will be we don't know. So I was actually Thank kind you. of right then, yeah. because no, I don't think he so. said when you pull the sheet, <laughs> if you pull the bed sheet, it's the same size but it's growing. So the actual fibers in the sheet are expanding. Could so if a planet is population. growing within the universe, then if planets expanding, there's also growing. I think I think the right answer is we don't know. Right, well, mm. that was what um, we established. I would there. give myself 50% correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, okay. I, I wouldn't. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is the official Leeds United podcast. 